ideal gas law equations. I put this one with Kermit, <laughs> it just made me laugh so much. <laughs> Else, because they're talking about gases. Okay, so we've got some empirical gas laws. And what does empirical mean? It means it comes from experiments. So it wasn't necessarily theoretical based. It was just, you know, what people noticed, for example, with uh, how pressure and volume and temperature are related. So they knew this. PV over T equals a constant. So this was the idea here behind uh, this empirical law here. So this is in your data booklet, so you don't have to memorize it. But let's go over pressure. Pressure, first of all, has units of pascals, or remember it could also be uh, newtons per meter squared. Uh, volume is going to be in meters cubed. We've got temperature, which is in Kelvin. Now this idea, though, is what we're going to be doing is just, just working with this general concept that, you know, P times V must be equal to, I'll just move this T over there, must be equal to something times t, for example. So this is what we're going to be sort of operating on, this whole idea that, you know, whatever this constant is, uh, we know that p times v equals some constant times t. So let's consider what happens if we have a constant volume. That's sometimes known as isovolumetric. Iso means same and volumetric means uh, volume. Um, so let's just consider what happens here. So we have P times V equals some box times T, and we're saying the volume is going to be constant, so we're gonna just kind of ignore it. So what that really tells us then is that the pressure notice P here is gonna be proportional to the temperature. That's the key thing here. So what does that mean? Well, that means that if we do a graph of pressure versus temperature, well, as temperature goes up, pressure goes up. In other words, it's going to be something that's, you know, linear. So for example, something like this. Now, what does it mean if we have a P versus V graph? Well, remember, if the volume is constant, that must mean that, you know, this thing right here, this value right here must be constant. So maybe that would be some sort of graph that goes like, maybe like straight down, for example something like that, because that would be a constant volume. So some graph like this, some graph like this, there we go, that's a constant volume. Okay, so now let's consider what happens when we have constant pressure. So again, I'm just going to write this equation again, PV equals some something times T. By the way, I'm going to do that over here too, because we do this everywhere, PV equals something times T. So what are we going to be uh, doing here? If the pressure is constant, that means we're going to have this right here essentially ignored. By the way, if it's constant pressure, we say this is isobaric is the name, or we can call it Charles's Law. So for example, if we look at this right here, we have that, hey, look at that. It looks like V is going to be proportional to T. That's going to be the key thing here. So if we have V proportional to T, what does that mean? Well, that means that uh, as T increases, so does V. So we're going to have some sort of linear graph like this. And if we have the pressure being constant, that means in this case here, this must be, this value of Y must be the same. So something like, something like this. Okay. So it depends on which graphs you're looking at. Now, if we want constant temperature, for example, that is called um, isothermal, but it's otherwise known as Boyle's Law. So we're going to now consider, hey, if the temperature here is constant, we're going to ignore it, basically. So that means then, oh, that means I have to move uh, my volume over to the other side. It's going to be 1 over V. Does it make sense I'm going to have pressure? It's going to be proportional to 1 over V. So that's going to be this one. Now you gotta think, ooh, what does that look like? Well, a graph of one over x goes like this, for example. So it's gonna do that same general shape like that. And we won't worry about a P versus V diagram because we have it right here. There we go, we've got all three of our different cases, constant pressure, constant volume, and constant temperature. So now let's consider what's called the ideal gas law. I put this down like ideal, <laughs> ideal. <laughs> So we're going to consider this. It's theoretical, but it is confirmed by the experiments above, and it goes like this. We say that PV equals lowercase n times r times t. But we also have another version. It turns out we also have this one here, which is capital N times KB times t. So these are here are your two different equations. Both of these are found on your data booklet. What I think is interesting is if we have the PV and the T, do you notice on this piece right here in the middle, that must be equal to that. In other words, we can state that, see this piece right here, must be equal to that, so we can put them together, and we can basically say that, hey, that means N times R must be equal to capital N times KB. So this is just a little piece that comes from it. In case you need it, you get it from these two equations, you just join them up. So in other words, this right here, this right here, those tell you that.
Now, what are all the different units? We've got pressure, uh, that's P. We've got volume, which is in meters cubed. We've got temperature in Kelvin. N is the number of moles. That's this lowercase n. R is a constant, capital R is, it's just 8.31 joules per Kelvin per mole. Then we've got capital N, the number of molecules or atoms, that's a total number. And we've got KB, which is Boltzmann's constant, which is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 joules per Kelvin. So this right here is going to be very useful for us because then we can use this to do examples. We can solve all sorts of questions. And I thought I would give you just a, a quick practical version of uh, something that I personally experienced. Um, and it turns out through a, you know, it seems like a lifetime ago, but when I was in the military, we were actually doing some uh, training, for example, on how to handle a uh, high altitude. They do this for air crew, for example. So what they do is they put you in this box. Um, in this room and they give you oxygen masks so you can breathe and what they're gonna do they're gonna simulate really high altitude they do that for a number of reasons uh, doesn't matter but they're gonna simulate high altitude and what happens of course is you take off your oxygen mask and the idea is that when you take it off you're gonna feel like super drunk and really weird and so it's basically can you spot that can you remember to put your mask back on um, it's interesting but the thing that I wanted to focus on is this um, what happens when you get into this you know box it turns out when i was getting in there i noticed it smelled so bad it smelled so bad of farts i felt like oh did someone have an accident in their pants but it turns out no 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 i figured this out as soon as they started the machine and again that's because if we consider pv equals nrt assuming that t is going to be constant um well what happens then we're going to just uh, ignore the nr that means that pressure is inversely proportional to volume. What that really means is that if the pressure, for example, so what they're gonna do is they're gonna take out a lot of the air from here, and if the pressure goes down, what happens? If the pressure goes down, the volume does the opposite, so the volume goes up. So what happened is this. Um, for example, they have these little balloons in there so that you know as they take out the air, you'll notice these balloons then will expand because the volume of them expands. Well, think about this inside your body. Do you have any volume? Yeah, you sure do. You have a spot, you know, for example, in your lungs or in your stomach, for example, where there's lots of air and also in your lower stomach as well. So why did it smell so bad in this room? That's because as soon as they lowered the pressure, it was kind of crazy, but like basically all your volume increases and everything just wants to go out. So that means you do the huge burps, huge farts. It's like, oh yeah, now I get it. It's kind of gross, but it's a very real application of PV equals NRT.